I'm Dr. Nick. We've received a significant number of questions about burns. Some people are asking about the various things they put on burns, whether using them is truly right or absolutely wrong, like ice, toothpaste, flour, or oil. We'll thoroughly answer the specific questions you sent us. And we also want to comprehensively address the important questions we got about proper first aid for burns, the different degrees of burns, what medications to take, what vaccines might be essentially needed, and how to accurately recognize a burn. We'll correct common misconceptions and answer all the questions you sent. Don't forget to like the video if you found it genuinely helpful. And please share it widely with others. Some people specifically asked about using various substances like oil or flour on burns, thinking it effectively reduces pain until they can do the necessary first aid or get to the hospital or clinic. The truth is, all these things actually slow down the natural healing process of burns, and sometimes they can even cause serious infections at the burn site. So healing isn't as good or efficient. For example, toothpaste often traps more heat, and it's certainly not an antibiotic to be used for treating burns. Same with flour, it's a fine powder, so it can easily cause infection or inflammation at the burn site. As for ice, some people mistakenly think that since we use ice for injuries, we should put it on burns to reduce pain. But that's not right at all. It can actually significantly increase pain. Oil doesn't make sense either. Putting oil on an inflamed or burned area can also cause infection. So, what should you actually do? The best and most effective thing is to put the affected area under running. Clean. Cool water for a full 10 to 15 minutes. The water should be cool, not hot or icy cold. You can use slightly cool or room temperature water. So, after putting your hand under water if you get a burn, what do you do next? How do you properly cover it? Someone asked about using cotton. No, absolutely don't use cotton because it can stick firmly to the burn and make things much worse. Also, it can cause infections. The best thing is to cover the burn with sterile gauze if you have it readily available. If not, Use any clean gauze you have at home. That's why it's best to always have some at home. We call it Vaseline gauze or Sanfretol. After covering the burn with Vaseline gauze or regular gauze, go to the clinic or hospital so the doctor can accurately assess the degree of the burn and treat it accordingly. Previously, we used to simply say first, second or third degree burns, but now the classification is much more detailed depending on the depth and severity. For example, people who get sunburns don't necessarily need to cover them, just keep them cool and comfortable. For superficial burns, which only affect the very top layer of skin and don't go deep, we need to cover them and apply an antibiotic cream or ointment. The most common one is Mebo ointment. It's not necessarily the absolute best, but it's very effective for burns. Of course, there are other options that doctors might prescribe or that are available at clinics or pharmacies. As for oral medications, there are three main things. First, vitamin C, because it's very important for wound healing. Second, a painkiller to reduce pain, preferably one with anti-inflammatory properties, as it significantly helps healing. Paracetamol isn't anti-inflammatory, so we prefer other painkillers. But if you only have paracetamol, it's fine to use it. Next, antibiotics by mouth. Do we give antibiotics for all burns? No. Starting from the degree we just talked about, where the burn affects deeper layers of skin, that's when we start oral antibiotics, as prescribed by the doctor. For deeper burns that affect the full thickness of the skin, we treat them the same way. But if the burn goes through all skin layers and affects the fat or even muscles, that's the most severe type. Sometimes, if the burn covers a large area or is in a dangerous location like the face, neck or, or genital area, the doctor may admit you to the hospital for monitoring and treatment. So, we've talked about the degrees of burns and how to deal with them, and about the medications you might need. What about vaccines? If you get a burn, your doctor will decide if you need a tetanus shot, depending on when you last had one. We've also discussed the degrees of burns. Sometimes burns happen on the fingers or toes, and if two or three fingers are burned together, they can stick together during healing, causing problems. So, 
Each finger should be wrapped separately with its own cream or ointment, Vaseline gauze, and then bandaged individually. Someone also asked about the dead skin and blisters that form with burns. Should you pop them or remove the dead skin? No, leave the blisters alone. The fluid inside contains important substances like plasma, which help healing. If they burst on their own, that's okay. But don't pop them yourself. As for dead skin, the doctor will decide whether to remove it or not. But usually we don't remove it at first. So, leave the skin as it is and don't touch it. These are the questions you asked, and we based our answers on them. If you have any more questions, write them in the comments and we'll answer them in a new video. Also, let us know in the comments what topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. We'll collect your questions and make videos about them. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss our videos. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and share it with anyone who might benefit from the content. Thank you.